welcome back to The Bite. My name is Jackie. If you're new here, I do a lot of Middle Eastern, modern, traditional cuisine, but I also throw in a lot of global cuisine as well. So if you're new here, hit the subscribe button so you can see what else is coming this fall. I have a lot of good stuff to show you. So if you follow me on Instagram, I posted a poll asking some things that you guys would like to see, and a lot of you guys suggested some Middle Eastern essentials for the kitchen, our pantry, our fridge, our freezer, etc. So I'm gonna show that to you today, starting with the spices. So let's get into it. So this is the king of all Middle Eastern spices, Zayt Uzatar. I know, the, okay, Zayt is the olive oil, Zatar is the spice. So we use really good quality olive oil and Zatar, which is like a mixture of thyme, oregano, sesame seeds, I think there's a little bit of sumac in there. Um, it's just very tangy, it's, just, it's, it's everything. You have to try it, it's becoming very popular as well and you can access it in most traditional grocery stores. What we do is we take a little piece of bread like this, with our hands like this, and we dip it into the olive oil, then into the za'atar, and the za'atar adheres to the olive oil and we just eat it like that. It is a snack, it is a meal, it is filling, and my grandmother says that it is brain food. So whenever I had an exam, I had to eat za'atar so that I would ace that exam, and it worked every time. Give it a try. <laughs> so we also have cinnamon in two forms, cinnamon sticks and cinnamon powder. This um, is a good way to add flavor to broths or desserts. It's just, um, you know, added. It gives it uh, like an essence of cinnamon rather than like the full on flavor. And the jello seeds are really good to add to cheeses. This is sumac. So you wanna look for, when you're looking for sumac, a reddish color. If it's brown, don't get it. Get the red kind. That means it's fresh. So it's tangy. It's kind of got like a lemony flavor to it. And this is really great in salad dressings. I'm gonna show you a delicious salad very soon called Fat Douche. We also use this in like our simple, simple salads. So we have cardamom here again in two forms. So the whole pods and the powder. I love cardamom, that's probably my favorite spice ever. Sesame seeds are very important. And we also have cumin. We use this in um, many, many, many dishes. One is called Mjadara, which I will be showing you later this week, so stay tuned for that. It's a rice and lentil dish. We also have coriander, which is essentially ground up cilantro seeds. Nutmeg, nice and warm spice. Allspice, clearly I use this a lot. And if you can't tell, these are actually old candle containers. True Middle Eastern fashion, or really any ethnic fashion, we like to use our containers in any way we can. They're glass, they're airtight, they're perfect. This is a great way to use candle jars. So allspice is also really good in broths. This right here is hawaja to semne. I showed you how to make semne or ghee, and this is the spice that we use. I'll show a link for my um, ghee video up here. This is just a delicious spice. My grandmother brought this for me from Jerusalem and it imparts the most delicious flavor that you can't get from anything else. You need to try this spice. And I'll leave a link for where you can get this because I know it's kind of hard to find. I'll leave that in the description box down below. Turmeric and paprika, two very important spices in my opinion. I use them for almost everything. I even use turmeric in salad dressings. It's a great anti-inflammatory. And seven spice. So these are the spices, and let's move on to the pantries. These are some of the pantry staples. Um, we're gonna start with olive oil for sure. This is a definite must. It's gotta be really good quality olive oil. We use this for salad dressings. We use it to cook. We use it to, as I mentioned, dip our zetozatar bread in. This is just gold, liquid gold. So we also have etaina. Very important. It's not just for hummus. I have Italian brownies. We use this in all our salad dressings as well. Um, kifta bilatina, which is like meatballs in the tahini sauce. This is very important. Mazahir or rose water, two different things. Um, it's a nice, adds a nice floral flavor to a lot of different desserts and different dishes. Honey, a natural sweetener. Pomegranate molasses, very tangy, and this is delicious in uh, vinaigrettes. Um, Halawa is like a sweet, and it's labeled here as sesame fudge. I honestly didn't know how to describe it, but that's like the perfect way to describe it. 
sesame fudge. It's a dessert and it's just got a very unique flavor and texture. So we have frique. Frique is not like let's get frique. It is um, a grain. It's very healthy and this is used kind of similar to rice. It's delicious and I recommend giving it a try. It's becoming very popular as well. Um, nuts of all kinds. So pine nuts are a staple. We also use almonds, we use walnuts, we use uh, pistachios. They give a really pretty color too, but um, pine nuts are really good. We kind of top everything with it. So different types of rice, vermicelli noodles that we use, it's, we call it shahariya and we um, just add it to our rice. Maftul is like um, Middle Eastern couscous and it's kind of like the big pearlized couscous. So we have lentils and other different kinds of beans like garbanzos, um, fava beans, all of those are very essential in our diet as well. And we have herbs of all kinds. So we actually like to dry our herbs and use them, and we also use them fresh. So here I have dried mint, and you have seen me use dried mint in some salads. So this is just a nice way to add some color, top different dishes off, and it's used very frequently in the Middle Eastern kitchen. We also use something called bulgur or bulgul. Um, it's also used kind of like rice and many different dishes use it. And I will be I will be putting all of these ingredients to use if I haven't already. So stay tuned for a lot of really good recipes to come. And then just really quickly, I wanna to touch on things that we keep in our fridge and our freezer. Um, obviously we use a lot of vegetables. So cucumbers, tomatoes, radish. We use tons and tons of lemons. We use pomegranates. I mean, just as many fresh fruits and vegetables as you can think of. That is the basis of most countries, if not all of them, in the Mediterranean, and it is a staple in our diet. So we can go vegetarian very easily based on our traditional food because it's hearty, it's filling, and it sustains us without using meat. We do eat dairy, we use lebne, we use yogurts, um, cheeses, but more than anything, we eat a lot of vegetables and a lot of very fresh, from the earth kind of food. So some freezer staples would be things like meat, chicken, lambs, um, bread. You know, we gotta keep our bread stash in the freezer, at least I do. Got a freezer in the garage. If you have a freezer in the garage, let me know in the comments below because I know I do and we keep a lot of bread in there. So those are just some of the Middle Eastern staples. If I forgot anything, let me know in the comments below something that you use or something that you guys in your country, what you guys are consider staples, if we have any common denominators here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you would like to see similar videos to this, let me know. Um, and I hope this covered what you were looking for. I will be putting all of these ingredients to use in coming videos, like if I have not already, like I mentioned. So stay tuned for more. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on social media, and we'll see you next time on the bye.